go. Well, uh, hey, Facebook Live, YouTube um, live stream. Uh, man, we are so excited that you guys are joining with us for another uh, night of Family Fest conversations. If you have not joined us in any of the previous uh, live streams that we've done, I'll tell you all a little bit about what we're doing. Um, at our church, Live Church in Hartsell, Alabama, we are in the middle of what we are calling Family Fest, where we are just trying to answer practical questions that families are walking through. So we're talking about marriage, we're talking about finance, we're talking about parenting, we're talking about blended families. Um, and so we have been doing for the last three weeks, we've been doing some nightly family fest conversations and um, having different panels of uh, couples coming on and helping us uh, just get some truths inside of our heart. So for those of you who are logging in, give us a like and give us a share. If you know somebody that needs just some encouragement in their marriage, do me a favor right now, call them on the phone and tell them, say, hey, you need to go and uh, watch this live stream. So I have the McMurray's and the Patrick's, two incredible couples. Uh, they're going to answer some questions for us tonight, share their part of their story, their journey, uh, the mountaintops, the valley low. Um, and so before I jump into the first questions, I'm going to let them introduce yourself, kind of tell us the dynamic of your guys' marriage, how long y'all been married, uh, how many kids you got, uh, kind of what life looks like for y'all right now. So on my screen, Brandon and Emily, you guys are on the top left. So I'm going to let y'all go first. All right. Okay. Um, I'm Emily. And I'm Brandon. And um, next month will be our 11th anniversary. Ooh. We have two kids, a four, almost five-year-old yep. and a two-year-old. And that's what life looks like. <laughs> our it kids is, are yeah. what our life looks like. Sure. Um, I'm a busy. teacher, so my life looks like I'm about to get out for summer. Yeah. And Brandon, yeah. Brandon had a head full of hair before y'all had kids, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah. No, and before this he was, married this me. Was dark. Yeah. It was just stressful. So yeah. y'all got married. I'm playing. Yeah. And, uh, we need to talk uh, about finances. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, uh, congratulations. 11 years. That's awesome. Um, yeah. And uh, the, the Patricks are on the screen below. And uh, they're actually about to go. Is it a wedding trip or anniversary trip? Y'all are about to go on? 24 uh, years next week. Yeah. How many years? 24. Oh, Lord have mercy. That's awesome. Listen, dude, if you're going to go to Mexico for your 24th, you got to, like, go big time on your 25th. I that's, already that's... booked it. We're oh, going to Lord. Ireland. All right. Oh, this live stream's awesome. over because if my wife watches this, I'm going to be in trouble. <laughs> All right. And uh, I'm just playing. So, uh, the Patricks, y'all introduce yourself. Tell us about your family real quick. Okay. So. I'm Jason. I'm Kathy Patrick. Um, next week will be our 24 year anniversary. We got married when we were 19 years old. So we were babies learning how to wow. navigate. We have three kids. Um, Kat will be 24 in December. Anna will be 22 in August and Justin will be 17 in October. Wow. And so we are almost empty nesters. Um, we're still hanging on to two of them, but, <laughs> Uh, Anna got married, Brad officiated, and they're doing great. So, and our life is, I'm a nurse, he's a plumber, business owner, um, pretty busy, wide open all the time, but awesome. we have a lot of fun too. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And here's the reason, for those of you watching live stream, the reason I asked these two couples to be on our, our panel tonight um, is because I get to personally watch their marriage and they um, they understand pursuing each other. They understand that love uh, is something that you you cultivate, and you um, you have to realize marriage is not a, a sprint; it's a marathon. It's uh, it's in it for the long haul. It's realizing there's those ups and downs and trials and tribulations. But my favorite thing about watching both of you guys is the fact that that y'all do pursue each other, um, that you're still in love even through kids and <laughs> everything else. It's very evident that y'all y'all walk in a, a, a true love. Um, as a couple. So we're going to dive in and uh, um, first question and then what we'll do, have the rest of the first one, let the other one kind of bounce off of it and then we'll just kind of keep the conversation going. All right. So number one, um, this is a good one. I hear this from um, mamas and ladies especially, but doesn't mean it can't apply uh, with a, a flip the script a little bit, but is housework in childcare a team sport or is it primarily uh, one spouse taking the lead on that? Who you want first? Y'all tell me. I have little ones. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, we'll go. 
Um, I mean, we both share equally share the duties of housework and taking care of the kids. You know, one of my biggest complaints, I think before we had kids was I would see even my relatives and friends that had kids, they would say, well, I need to talk to my husband about that, not for permission or not to make it sure it was okay with them, but because their husband didn't want to watch the kids. Right. And I constantly was telling Brandon, even before we had kids, you know, it takes two to be a parent and it takes two, you know, to take care of these kids. So I think we're very, very good. Sometimes Brandon probably does more than I do of the housework. And things. so we, you know, when we got married, we had the whole typical layout of I take care outside, you take care inside, all that kind of stuff. And then it just, you know, as you get on into marriage, you know, you just kind of take responsibility of certain things like got a little OCD, like I'm, I take care of the kitchen and, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm very present with my kids. I, I, I'm, I'm older. I'm 45 with a four-year-old and two-year-old and, um, <laughs> yeah, 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 it hurts. Um, but you know, uh, I, uh, I see a lot of very absent dads, they work a lot and that kind of stuff. And before we got married, we were busy bodies. I mean, we had a business and before we had kids. Huh? I mean, before we had kids. And <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, we worked a lot and all that. And it, it, everything just slowed down. Priorities changed. And yeah, I just, I want to be there. I don't want to miss those moments. I mean, yeah. my little girl just is four years old. You know, is going to be leaving preschool. And um, I don't even know where those four years went. I yeah. mean, it, it flies by. I mean, you guys know y'all have older kids. I mean, the time literally just yep. is zooms. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Jason, being Kathy. Younger, yeah, being younger, having kids, we definitely learned some hard lessons because we were learning how to grow up ourselves and take yeah. care of kids. And in doing that, there were years that probably got missed by him because he was having to be the primary breadwinner and you know, support system. And so I did a lot of that did fall on mine. And I think that every family dynamic is totally different because there are some spouses that work long hours and hard jobs and, and being a mom is a terribly hard job granted, but I think that you find a balance of, um, you know, years that we've gone by, I can tell you, it's been a juggling act of, okay, I'll pick up the slack a little here. I'll pick up the slack a little here. It's just, it's always changing. Yeah. You have to be willing to do that. You know, that, that makes me think about, um, you know, these past few years, just trying to get my foot in the door and building my career and not always having the vacation time and the time to take off. And he, a lot of that getting, taking care of sick kids has fallen on him, you know, but he's been willing to step up and do that. And there's not a lot of, not, there's not a lot of some, there are some men that are not willing to do that. Right. Well, it's awesome that, that he can do that. You know, I'm, while my kids were small, I was, of course, being a plumber right. all the time, long busy. hours, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, fifteen hour days, and yeah. you know, luckily I had an awesome wife that took care of the house. Yeah, <laughs> Kevin Clay. Here's a tension point, and uh, then we'll move on to question two. Is I think that anytime I've ever heard this frustration, whether it's from the man side or woman side, it's the uh, the where the man maybe does have the free time. I'll pick on guys a little bit. Maybe I won't get in trouble where the man does have the free time, but he does, he, he does not engage. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he thinks, Hey, I can sit on the couch and watch ESPN. And uh, <laughs> why, why you do all the housework, you take care of all the kids. And, yeah. um, and it, and I think you do have to, as a couple figure out what's the dynamic for your family and men that are watching, I'd encourage you that uh, as people ask me, they'll say, Hey, what's your hobby? Um, and the truth is what we both, my wife and myself, and just as you four are, uh, business professionals, you're engaged in your career. Uh, and so I, I don't have a lot of extra hobbies. Uh, my kids are my hobby. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, um, and so, uh, you have to make a choice to engage. And I think the tension point and the frustration lies if Jason comes home and, and, uh, he's been at work. Yeah, he is tired, but Kathy's just as tired. And mm -hmm. it's like, hey, babe, what are you cooking for dinner? <laughs> why why yeah. I sit on the couch with my feet propped up? Uh, and so to encourage you couples, you have to figure out what works. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's, um, when we said yes in our vows, we didn't say, hey, you you take care of this and I'll take care of that. Mm -hmm. But it, it's a partnership. And I think that's what, 
really the takeaway. And I'm hearing you guys say, number two, here we go. Uh, Patrick, I'm going to let y'all start with this one. What expectations did you have uh, in marriage that you quickly realized were unrealistic when you got married? You want to start it? or you want Well, you know, <laughs> with us getting married so young, I don't know that I really had any because we got married at 19 years old. Right. I graduated on Friday. Got married. He was like, got married Saturday. So wow, you were burning, man. You you yeah, you're ready. You're ready. That's down the road. I figured those yeah. out. Well, so, for me, I, I think what we were talking about this um, earlier, and for me, I think just naive. You know, 19 years old. You're just romanticism. You know, we're gonna agree on everything. It's gonna be so sweet. We're gonna have a little home and you know, our little baby and everything's going to be perfect. But I think the um, thoughts, um, realist, you know, non-realistic things that in your head is we're always going to agree on things. We're, you yeah. know, we're not going to go to bed mad. We're, you know, all these things you say, let's don't ever go to bed mad. That's not realistic. You're going to be mad at some point. Right. And I, I think the thing that we've just learned over the years is that even in that anger, even when you're mad and you don't agree, you still agree to love each other. And that's still the constant, like that's still the thing that you, you hold on to. And that took years of, I mean, cause like we could go through a whole segment of our ups and downs over the 24 years. Cause mm -hmm. you know, it's not always been perfect. We have a big, huge story to go through with that, but that, you know, you never think at the beginning that you're going to have some of the struggles that we've had. That's not going to be you. That's not, I'm not going to do that. I would never do that. Right. Um, but yep. you know, you do. And, but it's, um, it's crazy. The, the unrealistic things that people build up in their heads about, uh, we can choose to make it easier. We can choose to make it. That's not, uh, there's a reason your vows, it says for better or for worse. Right. <laughs> You, the, truly the worst is the worst imaginable yep. thing that you can think of. If you can get through that, then you can get on the other side right. of, yep. Good. of the better. Good. McMurray's what's some expectations y'all have? I think jumping off of what Kathy was saying, you know, I was 22 when we started dating and 24 when we got married. So I was still a baby. I mean, looking back, I thought I was grown, but, um, and so I came in with those expectations too, that it was going to be just happy all the time. We were never going to fight. We were just always going to get along and he was going to do whatever I wanted him to do, you know? And so our first year of marriage was hard. I mean, we almost got divorced at the end of our brutal. first year of marriage because it was so hard. And, you know, he's coming from a different perspective. So I've been, yeah, I've been married and uh, divorced for about five years. And uh, my first marriage was, it was it was pretty bad. You know, we had um, done everything wrong. We lived together. I mean, we just preached on it Sunday. You know, we lived together before, you know, we got married and we just, uh, we just started off not doing the things that we were supposed to do. And we did this one, tried to do it right. You know, we bought a house and I still had my old house and I lived in it and she lived in the new house for a little while till we got married and just try to do those things. And I tried to make it, I tried to make the right decisions this time when it came to, to stuff like that. But expectations, you just never know what you're going to get. You know, the, the truth was I knew I loved Emily with all my heart and I knew I wanted to be with her. But when we moved in together, it was a different, it was personalities clashed. I'm a very type A personality and she is the opposite. And we're both really stubborn. Yeah. And so, you know, the reality of, of what your expectations were, were yeah. really, yeah, night and day. Yeah. 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 And yeah. that's where you come in and you have to, you know, I know you preach on it all the time, but the, the structure of the marriage, I feel like people don't fight anymore to keep it together, you know, and, you know, as bad as we didn't like each other there for a little while. I mean, it was pretty rough. It was, yeah. you know, it was, it was brutal. Yeah. And, but we knew what we wanted to fight for. You know, we didn't say those words. We don't take those words for granted. You know, when we gave vows to her cousin married us, we take that serious. You know, we didn't, we didn't just say that just to say those words. Yeah. And, and whenever he, there's, there's an expectation that we, we set and people 
regardless of, of, uh, of the relationship. Anytime there's an expectation that's not fulfilled, there, there's an opportunity for a wound. There's an opportunity for an mm. offense. Uh, yeah. And that's why it can be something as simple as, uh, you know, not put the toilet seat lid down. I know guys get yeah. victim of that. It can be as simple as maybe you're a messy person after you finish cooking supper and you didn't do the dishes, whatever. We can, we, they, they literally, hey, you're just not meeting the expectation. We'll get into, for those who are watching via the live stream, before we end tonight, one of the major tension points that happens so often in marriage, matter of fact, I had a conversation today about expectation of finances and then expectation in your sex life. And, uh, and often those two uh, are the leading causes for divorce in our nation. And so if that's in the back of your mind, when you think, hey, um, my spouse is not fulfilling my expectation uh, in, in one of those areas, we're going to address that. So hang tight with us th throughout the whole, um, live stream. All right. So question three, McMurray's let y'all go first. And this one, how do you keep the flame burning in your marriage in the middle of chaos and busyness? How do you prioritize and continue to pursue your spouse? We've always made a conscious effort to date each other. Um, I had some, or we, I, we had some good, people to follow, to look up to that prioritize their marriage. Um, so we make it in, I mean, make it a point at least once a month, if not every other week that we have a date night. Um, we also try to go on a trip with each other every couple of years with vacation, without our kids, without kids. That's very, and it's extremely hard for me because I have terrible separation anxiety for my kids, but we, we, we make it happen. I mean, and it, we know we feel Recharge, you know, we feel charged up when we come back home and we feel like, okay, let's, let's get, it's time to get back to work, you know? Yep. And I think that's a, extremely healthy to make those things happen. Yep, I good. mean, it literally time flies by so quick and you just lose track of time and you're like, we haven't been on a date in a month or two. And I mean, and if you got to schedule it, you have to schedule it. I mean, yeah. we schedule everything else in our lives. So why not schedule out and say, these are the dates for the month that we're going to yeah. go on a date night. Um, you know, and it, not even for people that have kids, you know, before we had kids, we owned a business. He worked full time. We were extremely busy and we still made sure that we made time for each other. Yeah, um, good. You know, and another thing is we made it a priority not to let our kids sleep in our bed. As hard as it is, we yeah. are have been very strict about that yeah. because that's our time, you know, just winding down from the day and having conversations. A lot of the time, that's the only time we get to even talk. Yeah. So that's good. That's been a priority. That's good. All right, Patrick's. Yeah, same. Um, a lot of the same things here. You know, we, um, I, I would say the first 12 to 15 years of our marriage, you know, we struggled financially, so we didn't get to do a whole lot of stuff together. So we are packing it in now, but we, <laughs> um, we love to go on trips together. Um, even if it's a three day weekend getaway, you know, or mm -hmm. overnight getaway, just drive mm -hmm. up to Tennessee or something. I mean, we, we really feel like that's important just to say time out. We need to have a, a date night, you know, because sometimes weeks will go by and we've yep. been so busy zooming in and out, you know, work yep. on call schedules. Yep. And as a guy, you know, we don't think about that as much as for the most part women do. Right. And, you know, I've, I've learned to kind of pay attention to her. And when she starts throwing out them hints, hey, I need some more attention and we need to do something. And I start, you know, scheduling a, a real yeah. quick getaway because I know yeah. her to, you yeah. know, feel like not important how do you let me ask y'all this how do you um because both of you said day nights and trips and i 100 percent agree and concur uh how to on a daily basis what's some little bitty maybe don't even cost nothing little bitty things to say hey that i keep the flame going pursuing anything that y'all do um on a daily start. basis go ahead there's not been a day since we started dating they got real serious that I don't get up every morning and text her and tell her how much I love her. There's not been one day, not one day. Not, and, and we've been to bed mad at each other, you know, right. we, we've that typical, but I, I mean, I go out of my way to make sure that happens. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, you right. know, and if I, th and if I think about her during the day, if I, even if I'm just hustle and bustle of the day, I still send her a text. I mean, it's just, 
Yes. Oh, Emily, if y'all are fighting, did you respond okay or just a thumbs up? Oh, it might be some no, 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 no. I'll tell, no, no, I'll tell you. It's, it's love you. Yeah. It's not I love you. Or I'm going to be real busy at work this morning. <laughs> but I still get a text. But it might not be good morning, beautiful, like it normally is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Patrick, y'all got anything you do on a daily basis or a little nugget? Yes. Um, Jason's real yeah. good about sending me messages randomly. It says, I love you, beautiful. <laughs> love you, baby. I mean, just sweet. sweet. Yeah. Yes. Sweet. He's so Jason wears like his chaps around home. <laughs> well, he wears his, and, he wears his Harley chaps around the house. That's right. <laughs> exactly right. He sends you oh, pictures no. of him flexing and stuff. I got but, you. But yeah. I am the guy when she sends that 16 paragraph text message, I say, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I read the first three sentences and he lost me. I'll say, that. did you even read that? <laughs> I read the first few words. Yeah. He, knew, he knew where you were headed. He also knew where you were headed. Yeah, we cannot yeah. communicate through text messages. It, yeah. It's either just, I love you, we'll talk later. Or, yeah, that's it. But that's he does good. little things like, you know, gets up and gets my uniform ready in the morning, my, like right. my scrubs, or make sure he doesn't leave the house without giving me a kiss. I mean, that's those awesome. are little things that mean a lot. Yeah. And you know what? For those of you watching, just – uh so vitally important. I think that that pursuing your spouse is the secret sauce to having longevity in your marriage. And so uh, we pursue well when we're dating, but a lot of times we let the busyness of life and all that cause us to quit pursuing. Um, and so to to continue that pursuit. So you have to decide what that looks like. And a lot of times we don't have time tonight, but but I'd recommend there's a great book called Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. Uh, there's a book called His Needs, Her Needs. And when you identify, hey, maybe my spouse needs words of affirmation from me. Maybe they need gifts. Uh, maybe they need quality time. Maybe they need um, that 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 feeling of the love tank uh, so that they know I'm pursuing them. And uh, so I'd, I'd highly encourage that. So, um, all right. I'm going to answer the last one first. Hey, Brad. Uh, yes, ma'am. Can I say something on that? Um, like, I don't want to, I don't want to just like let people think that this is just like all a painted facade and this was not years of work Yeah, because there were years that we went not touching on those things. Yeah. There were years that oh, we went yeah, for sure. not yeah. um, feeding each other what we needed. And, sure. and, and some of that led to, you know, I'll be open book infidelity in my marriage. Right. And that's my testimony. I've shared that before. Right. But, and that's another day, another time. But those were years that we lost and that we chose to recover. And I just want to be really real in that. And, and somebody might need to hear that tonight and say, well, they look so happy and they look like they're doing everything so right. We weren't always doing everything so right. So yeah. I, just, I want restoration to be a word that people understand is possible. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Sure. Yeah. And you know what that if if as strong as this statement is, I think it still rests true. If you don't pursue your spouse, don't be surprised when somebody else does. Right. So you have to, you have to actively pursue. You have to actively say, Hey, if, if your love language is a words of affirmation, I'm going to be the one that's giving you those words of affirmation, not the guy at work or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And so those, I 100% Kurt, thank you, Kathy, for uh, uh, being uh, honest. And I'll say this for, I'll hit the pause button. Um, you know what, if, uh, marriage counseling is never something to be ashamed of, uh, a lot of times we let our pride get in the way and we say, Hey, we're struggling. And, and we just need to talk to somebody. Um, the goal of these conversations is to open up and be real to say, Hey, uh, it is, it's a fight. It's a battle to find time to pursue my wife. It's a battle whenever, um, it sounds selfish to say, I've got expectations that aren't being met. Uh, so for those of you watching, don't be embarrassed to seek marriage counseling. Uh, call it, you can call Life Church office. We'll point you in the right direction. Uh, if you attend church here, we'd love to be a part of, of helping you through that. Uh, we've got several references that we'll, we point people to. Um, so, um, all right. So uh, kind of playing off that, we'll do that. We're going to speed up just a little bit because I want us to get all these questions in, all right? Um, what has been the main tension points in your marriage, and how did you handle that those tensions? What's been the tension points y'all have had to work and navigate through? Ours is, it, it's definitely always been communication for us. It's, it's always been still. on. And still, <laughs> still yeah, we, it's a, it's a constant, 
for us. Um, you put, know, that, put that in a practical example. Tell me, like, you got a story or a uh, without. I mean, I'll person. give you an example. Just, uh, just a couple of days ago. I mean, it okay. was literally. I walk in the kitchen to ask her to do something, and she assumed I meant it the other way, and just the way you communicate and talk to people. And then, but, and we had an argument, you know, a pretty heated argument. And then after, you know, everything settled down, she was like, this would have helped, you know, she's learned to really, really figure me out. Cause I get really hot. And right. so she's really kind of just like, Hey, let's let them calm down for a minute. And she'll give me 10 minutes. And then she comes in there and says, here's how, Here's, why, here's how it came across, mm -hmm. and here's the reason why I said what I said. Right. Our first year of marriage, that was, that was the biggest issue for us. I mean, we stayed at each other's throat because we didn't know each other. I mean, really right. and truly, we didn't. We had to figure each other out. I mean, we are two opposite spectrums. I'm very passive. I'm very just go with the flow. He is very dominant and very... Um, I mean, he's a lion, <laughs> you want to say that, yeah. you know, so we're, I mean, we're total opposite when it comes to that. And so learning how to communicate with each other, I'm a fixer. I want to solve it right then. He needs time to cool off, you know, so just learning how to be married to each other and how to fix problems. Awesome. Yeah. Well, real quick, piggy, piggybacking off what you said about the counseling thing. I mean, that was, I was dead set against it. I mean, I, it was the thing I did not want to do. And it was the best thing that I did because we did it together. And then I did some individual sessions myself, but that was the number one thing that we touched on was communication. Yeah. And she, you know, she laid it out for us. Like, listen, you know, he gets hot then you're wanting to fix it right then as all you're doing is feeding that problem, you know, give him, give him some space and let him cool off because 10 minutes from now, he don't even remember why he's mad. <laughs> right. you, know, you know what I mean? Right. And so, yeah. Um, it, you know, never be ashamed of that. Yep. Yep. Never ever. Most people with counseling, I would say this, don't wait till your marriage is off the side of the cliff, hanging by two <laughs> fingers and a thread. Yep. You know, when you see trouble, you just go, Hey, we need to get this taken care of before. Yep. Uh, it's like having a splinter that gets infected. You know, yep. if you started by getting a splinter out in the beginning, a yep. lot better. So, uh, Patrick's what's some tension points that you guys have had to steer and navigate? Well, so I'm realizing that me and Brandon are the same person and that yep. Emily and Jason mm -hmm. are the same person. Because <laughs> we're, we're well, You're opposite. saying opposites do attract. There you go. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, over the years, me and her look back, we've swapped roles probably over the last 25 years where I was probably yeah. more dominant originally and she was more passive to where I've kind of chilled out and she's gotten more bossy. <laughs> you're in big trouble. You're in big trouble watch this over. Yes, this is getting good. That's <laughs> what you have to be married all these years. You just don't take things as personal as you used well, to. Well, I'm I'm quick to like anger at things sometimes. Like like you said, um, things come across a certain way, and I'll get hot headed quick. Yeah. And he's mm -hmm. like, "Hold on a minute," you know, and he has to kind of pull me down and then we have to say look we need to you know pause this because we yep. completely went over a cliff there for a second yeah. and and same thing we have to step away and say I'm sorry I said that the way I did and I'm sorry that I interpreted the way I did and that I came you know so it's just one of those things where you learn like you said, you learn one another and you say, I realize what I said didn't come across right, you know, and you just okay. learn marriage is a, a lot about swallowing your pride. And yeah, so I was fixing to ask you, Kathy, the same thing. So oh, when you having the same personality, do you find like humility and hum me being humble is like the hardest thing on the planet for me? Yes. Do you find that hard for you? Yes. Yeah. Like to to swallow my pride and go in there and be like, I was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I was wrong to act the way I did. So it's so, hard. So that argument today. But, with, yeah. She apologized of the day. And I still haven't apologized, so I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was wrong, but you should have acted like it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No. All. all right. So two more questions. And uh 
we're, we're going to get to the, in the words of Nacho Libre, the nitty gritty um, now, right? So uh, sex and finances are nationally the two major contributors to divorce. So statistically, uh, that's the two driving um, things uh, that, that usually is the top of the peak for, for divorce. Um, how do you keep those healthy uh, in your life? So I want y'all to speak to both of those topics. Okay, okay. I'll let him well, speak to finances. Well, you know, <laughs> finances for years, Kathy, when I work, was working crazy hours and, you know, I didn't have time to do it. She paid all the bills and, you know, it's not until I became an owner that I had the time to deal with it. I didn't realize the burden it was taking on her because I was a top. I'm like, hey, where's our money at? You know, mm -hmm. I didn't help her. I just complained when, you know, there was none when I wanted it. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. but me taking that burden over has made her life. I can see a difference to her where she's not stressed out. So we yeah, just, we are just alike, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> Holy we do probably the way that most people say not to do it. Like I have a my own accounts. Right. Yes. She has hers. But we're totally open but about we what open we have. Trend. I mean, yeah. we it's yeah. not hidden money. It's money that we know each other has, and we talk about how to spend it. Right. You know, I don't have a mistress account. There, there are. <laughs> There but are times away, buddy. where Mr. <laughs> Harley here goes a little crazy, but yeah. at the end of the day, he works hard. I want him to have the things he loves. He wants me to have the things I love. Therefore, we don't squabble about, you know, little things anymore like we used to. I mean, it's, um it, again, it's an evolution. Yeah, <laughs> no, I got you. Finances is, is really about stewardship. It, and yes. At the end of the day, it's, uh, it's, it, you can't spend more than you make. And, um, I said, I've, I've, Aaron, and I've laid in bed at night up to debt and our, up to, up to our neck and it's, it puts an undue pressure and a stress Absolutely. on you and tension that's just not healthy. And, um, uh, it'll crush a human. It, it will. will crush your soul. That's, that's the beauty about, you know, being older now, which we're still young, but having the kids that are older, yeah. you know, don't stress about it like we did when we were, you know, 19 and 20 25, years old. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I, I'm telling you, would you know, young people, they want everything that their parents have right now. Yeah. And that's why when they're 20, it's why it's important that the parents talk to their kids about finances and yeah. not, yeah, not discuss it and them figure out for themselves. Yeah. They're not going to make the right decisions. Yeah. So, do you want us to jump right into the other topic or? Yeah. The, uh, Brian, let's say, Brandon, you won't say anything. It takes 60 seconds to talk anything about. Financially, so, um, financially for us, we live, um, you know, we have some rental properties and stuff like that. We've always just, uh, you know, we've been very fortunate, um, but we literally finance everything off a 40 hour week paycheck. I mean, right. it literally everything that we do, we don't touch any of the other money. We, we just, you know, we don't we, we live we live debt free. Yeah. We have a car payment and a house payment, and yeah. and that that's it. And so, yeah, of course, of course, the small stuff. But I mean, other than that, if we can't pay cash for it, we just we don't do it. And that's I, a great. I, I know that's not for everybody. We're blessed to be able to do that. But yeah. you know, she does all the finances. Uh, I was a extreme tightwad when we got married. Right. When it stressed him out. I mean, it was and, very stressful for him to handle. And after a couple of years of marriage, she came to me and she says, listen, and she came from a household that didn't, they didn't have to worry about anything. They've, they yeah. got plenty of money. And so, um, you know, she asked to take over the finances and I said, I'll let you have it for a little while. Let's see how it goes. And she has been, she's extremely good. And I don't, I have no clue what my last paycheck was, <laughs> so, yeah. uh, but, but, you know, she, she's, she's very, he's made me very, you know, I used to, we were talking about this earlier tonight and coming from my background, I was very blessed and fortunate and I didn't know how to save money. I just spent whatever I wanted to spend, you know, whenever I wanted. And so he taught me so much, you know, like I said earlier, I was very young when we got together. And so I learned so much from him about budgeting and about saving money. So now a lot of times he'll get on to me for being cheap or not wanting to spend money. 
So those, before we kind of fold the next thing, I've put some handles um, uh, for those of you who are watching. I would encourage you to to get a hold of good principles and budgeting. Dave Ramsey has some incredible stuff, financial peace, some incredible stuff. The biggest thing of money, I tell everybody, there's no magical day that you're going to wake up. And if you're waiting on the government to pay off all your stuff or you're waiting on the check to be in the mailbox or whatever, uh, there's there's no magical day that you just have this um, this breakthrough. It takes growing. It takes stewardship. So get some good uh, principles to help take that tension off. If you keep that from being a tension in your marriage and you have some good stewardship, because I know people that make hundreds of thousand dollars a year and they're still broke. right? Mm-hmm. And it's because yeah. and I know people that make twenty thousand dollars a year and they're able to be generous and give a higher percentage of their income than um, you know, than people that make hundreds of thousands. And it's because of stewardship and how important that is. Um, so really, really quick, I want to say one thing before you move on. I um, was told this probably 10 years ago at a church we were going to, and I remember it so clearly and I think about it all the time, but um, this family said, she said that they were in debt to their eyeballs. They were getting things paid off. They literally were living paycheck to paycheck. And she said she wanted to quit tithing and her husband said, no. We're not like, we will not have food on the table before we will quit tithing. And that has stuck with me, you know, so for so long, you know, that if we do what God asks of us, you know, we will continue to be blessed as long as we have the heart to do that. But that's something super important to us too, is just, is tithing. Yeah. It's build, build your finances based on prince, biblical principles, not yeah, just absolutely. biblical principles. So, um, all right. So, Hey, for those live streaming, let's hang with us four or five more minutes. We're going to, uh, jump into this this last portion here. So when it comes to your your romantic life, your uh, the bedroom, uh, we'll stay PG with this. So none of y'all have to get <laughs> get worried. Uh, but uh, it's a ne- it's a definite tension point that marriages have to navigate and steer. Uh, for Aaron and I, I'll, I'll open the conversation. So in my love languages, honor and sex are my top two love languages. I recognize inside of my life. Uh, sex falls on air in about six or seven. So she's, it's really down. She likes quality time, acts of service in gardening more than she likes sex. <laughs> so, uh, although it's, but that's, that's not uncommon, right? So, uh, you know, whenever we were married 23 years and we, it, you have to go for a guy that usually don't ever change. There's a, there's a, a basic need that, that a lot of men, and if, if um, some, some ladies that, that walk in that same, hey, I really, really do love the affection and the, the sexual side of our relationship, um, but it creates tension, real tension in the marriage. I had a conversation with somebody today who called me that was struggling with this exact topic in their marriage. So how do you guys facilitate, have y'all walked through some tension in your sexual life? Uh, how do you communicate? Um, I want y'all to speak to that and I'll come back and ask a couple questions on top of it. Are we going first? Are we going? Are we going first? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, hang on. We're going to play this real quick. Let's talk about sex things. Okay. All right. Go ahead. So, on a serious note. So, our story <laughs> is. Turn red, but go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> so listen, our story is probably a little a little different than most. And I'm going to take just a few minutes because I'm just going to get really real. So about the time I turned 40, um, ours kind of went south a little bit. And mainly, mainly because of me. Like am I, I just lost my sex drive. I didn't. And Emily's her number one love language is physical touch hold her hand kiss her I mean we're not talking about going out in public but I'm just talking about walking in the kitchen and giving her a kiss will make her day I mean it'll light her fire and so then so we got pregnant with Sawyer and life happened after that it just did not become a priority and now when we talk about love language that is very important to us because we're on the opposite ends of the spectrum when it comes to that. So I, you know, she loves physical touch. She loves sex. She loves all aspects of that being intimate. And I let that go. So anyway, 
a couple of years ago, I ended up going to the doctor and getting, you know, my testosterone and stuff like that, just kind of bottomed out, got all that fixed. And then Braylon came right. and then it all kind of happened all over again. So I have to make an effort to make sure. And you say it all the time, Brad, about having her gas tank full because right. if she, you know, I'm not saying that she's going to go out and she's going to find it somewhere else. I'm not going to give her a chance to go find it somewhere else. Right. I'm going to make sure no matter what that I, that I keep her attention. I want all her eyes on me more than anything else. Right. And I've got to make sure that that happens. And that comes with like communication stuff like that. Um, and you know, it's, a, it's been a struggle over the last few years for us. And, and it's, it's, and I'm, and I'm a guy and it, you know, right. you usually don't hear that from a guy, but it happens. I mean, it, yeah. it, it is what it is. That's yeah, real. It's a real issue. Absolutely. It is. That's good. Emily, you want to say anything? I'm not talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know the Patrick's don't mind. Go ahead. Let's, yeah. let's on, uh, y'all both have smiles on your faces. <laughs> it's awesome. It's awesome well, flex. <laughs> so, I find the urge being inappropriate. <laughs> so, <laughs> Jason is, um, he, I mean, he's, he's right up there with the love language of, uh, physical touch for yeah. sure. Yeah. He, you know, he, he, um, loves to flirt. And I think that that's a big thing that we have really learned. Um, and we were talking about that earlier cause we were like, okay, how do we convey what we want to say yeah. here? But, you know, flirtiness is a big thing and you know sometimes our kids are like gross mom and dad you're you know get a room but um you know we love to flirt we love to laugh we love to joke and I think and, and I kind of hit him sometimes because he gets like inappropriate I'm like we're in church you know but <laughs> there you go don't get behind you at church now everybody <laughs> but he um like I know one of the things that you were saying was a big question was if my husband or if my spouse doesn't find me attractive anymore. And I think the biggest thing in that is um, your self-confidence portrays off to your spouse. So if, if you are taking, if it's a self-care thing, and I mean, over the years I've battled self-confidence issues with weight up and downs and that kind of thing, which most women who, you know, bear children do, but I think it's just, you know, going out and buying a new outfit. I feel good in and trying it on for him. And he, you know, met that. And then he's like, you look beautiful. I mean, it's just little things like that, that may not ultimately lead to sex, but just that admiration and that, you know, and we're big snugglers. We, we love to cuddle in the bed at night and talk to one another about our day. And I mean, it's just, it's little things like that just, but I would say the flirtiness and the joking and, and being lighthearted about things is the biggest thing with us about keeping that fire burning. Yeah, yeah for sure. The, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm big on. Don't look tell, down. Telling, <laughs> sorry, I'm been, you know, I'm big on telling her she's beautiful. Cause I want her to know that I think she's beautiful. Cause I really do. And I can tell when she needs that. And, yeah. and, uh, like I said, I'm big on, physical touch and going by and kissing her and yeah. you know yeah. whatever yeah and the uh uh with that i do think that so so brandon i want y'all to, to answer that question that that kathy kind of even alluded into um when there's a couple that goes hey the the brand i love the fact that that you're open and transparent and you spoke to that fact of hey i I'm going to be intentional about meeting this need in, in Emily's life um, because so many times we'll make excuses and go, well, I don't feel it. I don't have any emotion. I'm not whatever, because we, that Hollywood portrays this certain aspect of what sex should be. It's, yeah. it, it's uh, you know, they're always the, the perfect model. It's always, um, you know, crazy and chasing each other around the house with, with whips and handcuffs and whatever else. Yeah. Right. And, uh, but with my experience in counseling, even my own experience between Aaron and I, you know, is, uh, hey, turn the lights all the way off and I want the covers up to my neck. And, and uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it's very, it's very private. Um, and so that's where the Bible, to bring scripture into this, the Bible says, 
the marriage bed is undefiled. And, uh, mm -hmm. and so the one thing as husband and wife, for those of you watching via live stream, the one thing husband and wife that you share together that cannot be shared with anybody else, that small little bitty box of your sexual intimacy uh, is a beautiful picture because uh, sex is a physical act that has a spiritual um, connection. It has an emotional connection. It has every aspect. And so how important that is uh, for, uh, to use kind of a big word, that consummation of the marriage, uh, yeah. that happens through that act. And, um, uh, so what would you say, and Emily, I, I'd really like to hear your, even your take yeah. on this, yeah. Brandon speaking to it too. Um, yeah. when you go, Hey, I'm just not feeling it. How do you, you know, can you make yourself feel, I know Brandon, you said you went and got some, some, uh, medical answer, no, nothing wrong with that. There's no condemnation, you know, so people yeah. laugh about if you need medicine or you need, you know, some chemical help or whatever, uh, you know, there is nothing shameful behind going, Hey, I, I want to, to walk this out, but, uh, when I'm just not feeling it or, um, not into it is, is it okay to go, Hey, I don't, I'm, I'm going to deny my spouse of this because I, I'm not into it. All right. So tell me your thoughts. You know, I, um, just to get a little bit into my, not to give too much of my family business, but my parents, my biological mom and dad divorced when I was seven. And I can remember my mom telling me as I got older, how mad my dad would get at her if she turned him down or if she said, you know, I'm tired and he would just not talk to her for days. And I remember thinking, I don't ever want to be in a relationship like that. You know, I mean, just because he may not want to meet whatever needs I have at the moment doesn't mean he's not going to at some point there. It doesn't give me a right to get mad at him or to hold a grudge against him. Um, I mean, there's plenty of things that he and, you know, his love language is acts of service. And do I always meet that need? Probably not. Right. You know, so, I mean, we have to look at it from all sides and be aware that, you know, we're not always going to meet every single need that each other has, but we have to make an effort. I mean, that's the point of being in a marriage is to oh. make effort to, like you said on Sunday, you know, we're sacrificing ourselves. Love is sacrificing yourselves for what the other person wants, yeah. not pleasing ourselves. So I think it's important to keep for that sure. in mind. So how do you, let me ask you this. How do you communicate? If you, your, your love tank's empty, how do you communicate that? She usually tells me, yeah. I mean, so we'll just give an example of a few years ago, like when I first started having the issue where my testosterone just literally just tanked and I had, I mean, I hadn't, it was not on my radar. And a couple of times I came home from work and she was, you know, she, she was wanting to get intimate. And about the third time that I told her, I just wanted to go to bed and she flat out, she says, it started subtle text messages. Right. Do you still love me? And which is very out of character. Right. Do are you, do you still find me pretty? And I'm like, okay, what's going on? And then we finally just broke down and talked about it. And she says, I've asked you twice. You turned me down. Right. You no, know, are you really tired? Something else going on. Right. It was what's very hard on? for me. Cause I was thinking, okay, this is not normal for a man to be you know like this and so what's going on like is he having an affair is he is there some you know is there so, something else going yeah, on chirp in her head so and, 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 and that, that that's an honest question because it's hey is he looking at pornography is his mm -hmm. yeah. name somewhere yeah. else right oh, it was obviously brought up. you know it was you think up, about yeah. a man you know this is not that you're abnormal but it is a little you know it is odd, not odd. it's <laughs> different for a yeah, man you know yeah. and so yeah of course my mind went like you're getting fulfilled somewhere. So where yeah. are you, where are you getting fulfilled? Yeah. yeah. But it comes back to that level of communication. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I, don't, sure. I don't care who you are when you, it's hard to not feel rejected by your spouse. So mm -hmm. Jason, comes home going, Hey, Kathy, he's got candles and romantic music. And Kathy's like, I'm too tired. I got a headache, rolls over, whatever. That rejection is hard not to take personal and go, Okay, finally. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I got here's my, my last question. And I'm a, uh, a Kathy because I, I get asked this, believe it or not, for my pastoral seat, seat when I'm doing counseling. How often is uh, a good expectation of how, many, how, how often should you have um, sex and romantic in your oh, per week, per month, whatever? What, what's that look like? 
<laughs> well, um, <laughs> I, <laughs> expectation wise, I mean, I, I just like Brandon and, you know, they were saying is there's different times in, you know, in your life and there's right. different stress levels. There's, di- you know, different periods that you go through. Yeah. I mean, you know, my daughter asked me this, my oldest daughter, she's saving herself for marriage. And so it was appalling to her that you even have sex at one point when we were talking about this. <laughs> and she was like, so how often do married couples have sex? And I said, well, a lot of people on average, you know, probably at least two times a week. And she said, two times a week. <laughs> so, and it's just, just crazy to her, which I'm going to embarrass her by saying that. But I mean, it just, to me, I don't think it's even a sex thing as much as it is an intimacy thing, because wow. sometimes our intimacy is not fully, you know, we may be, we may be all intending uh, on the act and then be like, okay, let's just snuggle. I mean, <laughs> so, well, see, I mean, you know, she goes wanting to snuggle and I think her right the other, like, okay, she agreed to yeah. have some fun. So yeah. And then she gets, yeah. So, so no, it's all right. No, you're good right there, right? I know we're going long, but y'all hang tight with it because yeah. what you just said. All right. So, guys, I always in marriage counseling, I'll say most of the time, and then there's 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 non-typical situations. Women are crock pots. It takes them a little while to get kind of turned on and warmed up. Guys are microwaves. We cannot have sex on our mind and your wife walk by and look at you a certain way or pat you on your butt. You're going. It's microwave. Hello. Oh, it's all, 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 all. all right. So talk to that, Jason. I want you to uh what you just said. Well, I mean often, especially been married as long as we have two, she'll want to cuddle and you know, she'll start just cuddling with me. I'm like, okay, she's ready to have some fun. You know what I mean? And and then she's like, Well, no, I just want to cuddle. So then I gotta, you know, use my years of experience to get her. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's part of being married. Oh, it is. You're, she's a crock pot. Absolutely. She's a crock pot. Yeah. Right. How it is to turn the bone switch on. Yeah. Yeah. So it's slowing down. So, young yeah. married people out there, listen, this is, I know we're having fun and everything, but learn learn to enjoy your sex life. It, it's not meant to just be a three minute, <laughs> three minute adventure. Right. It could, it, as it, my kids walk in the door. <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> yeah. um, so learning to snuggle, learning to enjoy each other, learning to talk, learning to to take your time really is important. Right. And um, they make that uh, so both of your needs are being fulfilled because um, for ladies, sometimes uh, guys, I'll help you. Sometimes you get your fix and the lady feels unfulfilled because she needed to be a crock pot and kind of. Uh, um, you know, it, she needs something longer than three or four or five minutes of of that connection time emotionally. Well, and I think that we're feeding that that relationship. Like we were talking about meeting, you know, the the you know you're talking about the love tank being yeah. full. Yeah. Okay. Well, my I'm acts of service. That's one of my biggest things is acts of service. So I come in, and this man right here's got my kitchen clean. His yeah. love tank is about to get full because he contributed to mine. I mean, that's just part of it. It's it's a give and take. And if if he contributes to those things that he knows make me happy, then I'm not hesitant to make him happy, you know, and to yeah. feel that need and Good. you know, to provide that nurturing to our, you know, relationship. I mean, that's just that's good. Yeah. Yeah, and tell you know, and tell those that you know, tell the young couples, you know, or or people that even that's been married for a long time, just tell each other what you want. This girl right here, she don't shy away from it. Yeah, I mean, she'll she'll flat out tell you, you know, or tell me, um, <laughs> you know what, you know what she needs. And yeah, it, it, it took her a while to get there, but it's what we needed. Yeah. You know, because. I'm a guy. I mean, I don't, I don't yeah. pick up on a lot of that stuff. You know, I'm just literally just going, you know, trying to make it through the day. Yeah. You know? And so she's like, Hey, grab me by the face and says, all right, listen, this is what I need, you know? Yeah. And so, 
In every aspect. <laughs> yes. That, and that's very healthy because you know what? You're two men and women are created different. What feels good and what's enjoyable in the bedroom is different for even different people. And yeah. so being able to communicate that to your spouse so you can so you can bring fulfillment. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, you know, to say, hey, that hurts or that feels good or I enjoy that or that, that's that's completely OK. And I know it seems weird and odd and contentious to be a church organization and even talking about it. But uh, you know what? Having a, hel- a healthy sex life is some of the greatest glue that you can have in your marriage uh, because it's a bond that God looked at and he said it is good. And uh, when God called it good, I said Sunday, if you were not here, I encourage you to go listen to the uh, um, message. It's available on YouTube. Great message. I, I said Sunday, God owns the patent on marriage and God owns the patent on sex. And the world attempts to just pervert those things. And so wow. what's the patent? The patent is the one who created it and the one who sets the original pattern for it. And so what we've got to do is to learn not to be the pattern of this world, uh, but to say, okay, God, you made this and you called it good and it can be healthy. So, uh, well, you know what? You guys have been awesome. We went long tonight, but that's okay. I think we uh, had some great information. Uh, For those of you watching via the live stream, um, if we can do anything, serve you in any way, form or fashion, uh, there are a lot of great resources out there that I'd encourage you to go and plug into. Uh, Number one, you want to have a biblical view on all these topics that we have looked at tonight. So Brandon and Emily and uh, Jason, Kathy, thank you all for investing some time in marriages tonight and being open, honest, and transparent. Uh, Y'all did a great job. So, all right. So God bless you guys. Go have fun. Amen. (laughs) I see.